another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today we're going to be buttoning up the oil pan, AC compressor, fuel rail, uh, power steering pump, a um, couple things. So let's dive into it. It's going to be interesting. Okay, so a um, couple of things I did was clean up these bolts, get it ready for the AC compressor. Also, um, clock the face housing of the turbo because you need access to this bolt in order to bolt on the transmission. So that was a quick little uh, adjustment from here all the way around. You loosen those and move this anywhere you want. So that's done. Um, I put the oil filter on there and that's of course just to break the motor in. So that should be good. And now we're going to put on the oil pan and basically what that consists of is uh, me installing these studs to make sure I put it on there evenly. And just the way I did the Stereon, we will not be using a oil pan gasket for this application. So um, we're gonna use silicone. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it under each hole and then keep going under each hole, under each hole and keep going, keep going, keep going. And then it will be good. Um, also, we have the oil pan bong welded on there, um, which is great. Comes out right in this area. So there's plenty of room. So let's lay down the silicone first and then we will slide on the oil pan okay so i took the guides out which is this one and that one um, just for now and we are going to put on the uh, transmission pan in just a minute but um, the reason you want to put those guides as obvious. You want to make sure the pan goes on equally and you can check your squish pattern from the side once you take out the studs. So um, I didn't get a chance to show you because I didn't want it to get too tacky or too stiff before uh, it cures, which granted takes about 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours, somewhere in there. But regardless to what I wanted to make sure this was seamless and Kind of take it from there so um, basically I put the silicone around each nugget and then uh, across and each nugget I go around them and then basically after it's on and tight you want to snug it just a little bit so the actual silicone is forming a gasket and then you'll see a little bit of a squish there which is what you want just a little bit nothing too crazy and you're gonna have that all the way around and what's gonna happen is is when you uh, go to tighten everything down a uh, torque specification um, it's going to have uh, a nice firm gasket because this is the high tensile strength um, silicone that's laid on here so it'll actually come out really 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 nice uh, same stuff we used on a Starion so it'll be perfect alright so we're gonna let that dry and then and just to give you guys an idea of what that looks like here is the piece and it goes over just like that so now we got the uh, stud sticking out so we can tighten that down and then it's able to bolt down to the transmission and everything is happy happy so not too bad um, I also put the uh, return line there so you can see exactly where and how it's being routed. Pretty simple. Um, I have the fittings for the turbo. I actually have to find it. But um, yes, so that's going to come out perfect, perfect. 
Okay, so next what we're gonna do is modify this fuel rail. We're gonna add in the fuel pressure regulator, which that's brand new. Um, and I have to add the gauge and the fittings and whatnot, but um, this has to go on this rail and that hole is actually too small. So what I'm going to do is port this hole out to accept this with a O-ring and take it from there. So um, first thing I'm going to do is measure the two and uh, measure this one with a slight increase for the uh, O-ring that has to go on here and pop that into there with the two bolts which as you can see it's universal and fits perfectly okay and here she is a little o-ring to ensure some sealing power and we're gonna put the rail on and test fit make sure we get everything going to the right place and we're gonna mount the regulator including assemble the regulator okay uh, i haven't put on the gauge yet but i got all of the lines connected exactly where i want them to be so it'll be from here to here um, i could have connected it here but it actually put the line way too close and you aim it this way then you got to find a weird loop so that all didn't work out so from the return goes to the fuel pressure regulator it receives the pressure which is adjustable by this guy here and you'll see it on a gauge which I'm going to put in in just a minute and we're going to get a return to the tank from the guy underneath so it's pretty simple um, very straightforward and uh, yeah so that's gonna go around the back actually I could have it go around this way but we'll see Everything's still up in the air. Okay, and it also comes with this gauge, which is actually pretty nice. It's liquid filled to ensure accuracy and the needle doesn't jump around, which is great. Also, out of all of the fittings, this is the one that you're gonna to have to use Teflon tape or liquid Teflon, whichever one you prefer, and uh, pop the gauge in there spruce it on tight and it should be good to go okay so the gauge is in there and it is looking beautiful exactly the way it should so we're gonna let the liquid Teflon dry and uh, move on to the next thing okay so I bolted in the brand new AC compressor four bolts pretty simple I'm going to be taking this back off to do fluids and whatnot, make sure everything's up to par. Um, bending the tube more uh, forward cracks some of the paint off, so I'll touch that up. No big deal there. And uh, next, I'm going to be putting on the power steering unit, which is right about here. And I'm going to uh, be cleaning it up. All right, so I, um, I test fitted the um, power steering bracket plus the uh, power steering pump, and it was so rusty and nasty, I, I couldn't let the car go out like that. So I went ahead and threw some black paint on both. That's this guy and this guy. So it looks a lot better, um, less old, because it is um, old reused components. I cleaned up all of the bolts, as you can see. Um, I changed this bolt, which uh, normally is a 14 millimeter, I believe. And I have a 17 millimeter. And then I have the crossbar that goes on there. And that bolts up to that mount there. And now you can kind of see how tight the whole package is. Um, I think the dipstick is fine in this area. Um, there's a line that goes here for power steering and up top. And then there's a little fitting that goes onto there. 
but um, yeah, I think it'll be fine in this area and you can really see how compact everything is, but I still believe I'll be able to get some sort of downpipe in here, um, even if I have to uh, take the pipe and oval the pipe, which is instead of it being a complete circle, it's actually an oval when it gets closer to AC components, tube, things of that nature. So um, yeah, it's definitely coming out good. It looks like we're almost done. We have a couple of more items that we need to address. One of them is going to be the valve cover. It is not staying like that. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time to get cleaned up, but that's going to get done in general. So we are ready to move on to the next thing. Okay, so the next item we're going to install is the drain line for the turbo. So I have vibrant performance there um, and it's 10 a.n. So we're going to be installing 5 8 hose, a uh, single layer braided. This will be able to withstand the heat and other items that come with uh return line issues and yeah we'll be good to go so basically what we're going to do first is we're going to button this guy up and i do have a spare gasket around here which i will grab in just a second and we're going to measure out the line from and to but i do have to get another fitting which i do already have so I'll be uh, connecting that simple and then running the line and measuring everything out. Okay, the fitting is on perfectly. And I pulled out two different sizes. We got a probably like a 30 and a full J bend. And I think think we're gonna have to go with the 30 and you see here why right here okay there we go threads on perfectly so as you can see that gives me a nice smooth angle this guy, I could turn it down a little bit and then we can add the hose between that small area, which is great. Most of it is metal, just a small portion will be silicone. So let me get this on there and we will be right back. Now to install, all we have to do is slide this hose into that area right before the new threads so that is the new threads once you push it on it should sit about like right there on both sides and then you just screw it in together done and done okay there she is in all of her glory so um, I've seen people put these in a vise and then tighten them down. Um, either way, uh, it works. I actually did this with two open-handed wrenches. Um, adjustable wrench, actually. And it worked out perfect. Um, I might shorten this a little bit. It's got like a, a tiniest little kink in there. Um, but yeah, just shorten it just a little bit and then that should be good to go. But... Everything is tight and ready to go. Um, also, when installing these, you're supposed to have like kind of a natural flow kind of situation. This is almost dead even. So I'm definitely going to shorten that guy um, a little later. I'll probably go back and do this some other time, but she's looking great. She is connected. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next thing. Okay, we are back. So, um, 
Jeez, hopefully third time's their charm. All right. So what we got here are a different type of injector that actually fits the factory fuel rail with no modification. These are actually Subaru injectors. Um, there's different gears that come side feed. Um, some of them are top feed. I forget which year, but um, basically in the description it says that these fit uh, Eclipse, Gallant, other Mitsubishis and stuff like that. And these also fit the Mirage. So um, these injectors have been modified by a company um, that allows these to flow 980 cc's. So, phew, everything crossed. Let's hope these turn out well. All right, added in these O-rings for better seating. And let's begin some tests. Ooh. That is definitely perfect atomization. You've seen as soon as it turned on, it began to mist. That's perfect. Alrighty, so we're off to a good start. Alright. So let's stop that one. And let's do medium speed. Good. High speed. That's perfect. Okay. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's go back to low speed. You see it's almost at 80, almost 90 PSI, and they're still spraying normally. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to see in an injector. So that's perfect. Alrighty, let's turn that down. All right, 60. That is 40. All righty. Oh, man. I'm excited about these injectors. All right. So, let's stop that. That is another thing, too. Um, atomizing is extremely important, especially when it comes to saving gas. So, all right. So, we're going to do an RPM test. That'll be next. And then a couple more tests. And... Man, it's looking good, extremely good. Excited about these injectors. Uh, we're gonna take some measurements last. Okay, last but not least, we are gonna do the flow test. <coughs> Let's do 30 seconds. All right, and as you can see, it is dead even between all four. Uh, I'm gonna do a high speed and test again. Actually, we'll go to that now and see if anything changes. Go.
Look at that. Beautiful. Oh yeah. The differences are very minute. That is exactly what you want in an injector. Pretty much to be flat even. So I call that a win. These are our winners and we're gonna button these guys up on the motor and this is what we'll be using. 980cc Subaru injectors. And with that being said, that is a lot of good news. They always say third time is a charm. And that was the case in this episode with those injectors, which are 950cc. Should be good for what we're doing. But um, yes, I will see you guys next time. If this is the type of content that you like to watch, definitely consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up, hitting that bell icon in the corner to get updated notifications when I drop a new episode. And I will see you next time.